Hey guys, welcome back to Token Tech. Today I'm finally able to show you what settings I would adjust in the BIOS for Ryzen CPUs. All right, so um, I've done videos before on adjusting or dealing with temperature when using the new Ryzen 3000 CPUs, and this is a follow-up video to that where I'm showing you how to adjust those settings in the BIOS. In my other videos, I show on Ryzen Master, which is great because you can just do it from the desktop but it's not really the most stable software it doesn't work all the time and you have to reload the profiles every time you boot up your system which can be quite annoying going into your bios will i adjust them and every time you boot your system it will automatically load those settings um, but i know it can be a little complicated and be a little scary to get into it now before we get started i'm going to address two things one if you watched my most recent video i don't really recommend adjusting too many of the settings, I don't really recommend adjusting voltage or even clock speed for these CPUs. They do a great job of boosting if you're able to cool them. So getting a better cooler, increasing the airflow in your case, um, adjusting your fan curves and things like that will get you a lot more performance without having to adjust anything and keeping the CPU completely safe. I am currently running my CPU on auto and I'm getting almost the same performance as I did when I overclocked my CPU. So go ahead and keep that in mind. This should really only be used for those of us who are having temperature issues that can't be dealt with otherwise, or if you're in like a small form factor case or anything like that. All right. So just keep that in mind. All right. Two, I'm doing this on an Asus motherboard, which means that it's going to be specific to Asus motherboards. If you don't have an Asus motherboard, your BIOS is going to look different. All right. These are specific to the different brands. Okay. Now the settings are going to be basically the same. So you can apply the same ideas to your motherboard, but they might be in slightly different places or they might be called something slightly different. All right. So you're going to want to make sure to, to look up your motherboard BIOS and make sure you're doing everything exactly correct for you. But if you have an Asus motherboard, you can follow along exactly. All right. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. So when you first load into your BIOS, if you've never been into it before, it'll probably load up into something that looks like this. This is the easy mode or the safe mode where you can adjust certain things like fan curves and, and certain profiles, but you can't really get into the settings, right? So you can't hurt anything in this, um, in this mode. So what we're going to do is press F7. It's going to load us straight into the advanced mode. Um, your main page is going to give you all information about your system, about your CPU, the speed, the RAM, the BIOS version, and things like that. Um, but we're not going to worry about that right now. What we want to do is go over to Extreme Tweaker. Now, different motherboards are going to call this different, different things, but this is where you're going to have your uh, overclocking settings, basically. So when you first get in here, this might actually be set to auto or default, right? This, this AI overclock tuner, this basically is addressing the presets of your RAM. All right, so in case you don't know, if you buy RAM, like 3000 speed, 3200, 3600, whatever, you, if you don't go in and switch it in the BIOS, it's gonna run at base clock speed, which is 2133, which is very, very slow. You're gonna be wasting your money at that point. So if nothing else, get in here and go down to DOCP standard, and that'll apply the preset for that RAM to allow it to run at its rated clock speed. Okay, so like mine, 3600. Um, and then it's going to set the base frequency and all that stuff. Some other boards might call this XMP because that's what Intel called it for a long time. But DOCP is what Asus motherboards call it. And that will set your RAM to run at its rated speed, what you paid for. So make sure you do that at the very least. All right. Um, the next thing we want to look at is core ratio, CPU core ratio. I have mine on auto. Like I said, I'm running mine on auto, but what you want to do here, this is the, the setting you want to switch to set a locked clock speed. Okay. So you can put 39 and that'll be 3.9 gigahertz or whatever you want, right? You can do 40, four gigahertz, 42, 4.2 gigahertz, 43, whatever. Right. And that's how you would adjust that. So let's go ahead and put 3. Uh, 39 for 3.9 gigahertz, right? We're going to leave that on auto memory frequency that should be set already because we set the DOCP. Um, F clock is your fabric um, frequency, right? This, you want it to be half of your memory speed. So for me, 3600, half is 1800. So that's what I would want mine to run at. If you're running at a different speed, you want to make sure you do half of that speed in your uh, F clock. All right, that is going to be very important to get the most performance out of your out of your chip. 
Okay, we're going to leave all these things alone. We don't need to worry about any of that stuff. And then here we have core voltage. All right, this is the voltage setting that you're going to want to adjust. This is where you're going to get better temperatures. Now, there are two settings on my motherboard, and some motherboards only have one or the other. So I've had motherboards in the past that only have offset mode. And what that means is you can apply a negative offset or a positive offset, and then you can type in whatever value you want. So we're going to do, let's say, negative offset, and let's say 0 0.5 whoa sorry yeah 0 0.05 uh, volts right and what that'll do is it will basically decrease the auto voltage by 0 0.05 volts okay um, that's useful for some people but it's not really the best way to get the exact voltage that you want all right um, manual mode is what you want to do if you want to set in an exact number. So with manual mode, and we're doing 3.9, I can do something like 1, um, 1 1.1, or even 1.0. I know mine is stable at. All right, so we're going to do that. Okay. SOC voltage, if you're between 1 and 1.1 1 .1 on SOC, then you're basically fine. My, I noticed that on my motherboard, auto runs fine, but if you want to be exact, you can put 0. Point, I mean 1.0 or 1. 1.1 volts but for the most part these run fine on on uh, auto your DRAM voltage should be set by the DOCP which is 1.35 some will do 1.4 um, but typically 1.35 to 1.4 is where you'll see that and that should be set automatically with DOCP now I know in some of the <clears throat> excuse me I know in some of the comments that I got in that video people were saying that they were setting different voltages but then they were crashing on startup or crashing when launching certain applications and that is because of something known as voltage droop. All right, when you put a load on your CPU, usually you get a voltage droop where the voltage will dip down for a little bit and then spike back up. Okay, and if that droop is low enough, it can cause your overclock, or in this case, your undervolt, to go unstable. All right, so how do we address this? Well, there's something called load line calibration. All right, now depending on your motherboard this could be in a different spot than where I just showed you it is and it might work a little differently so for us level one is the lowest and level five is going to be the most intense load line calibration okay other motherboards work in the opposite where one is the most intense and five is the lowest and some don't even use level one through five they have other words they use so you're, this is where you're going to really need to look up what does your motherboard mean by the different levels okay so basically what this does is it kind of smooths out that uh, voltage droop so if you set like a level three or four you're going to have very little voltage droop whenever you put a load on your CPU I don't need to do this on my motherboard but if you're having instability when booting the system or when running specific applications this is something you want to address now be careful though because this will put extra stress on the power delivery of your motherboard what that means is over a long period of time this could burn out your motherboard now if you have a high quality high-end motherboard with a very robust power delivery nothing to worry about but if you have a cheaper motherboard maybe not the best power delivery you know b350 b450 motherboard maybe not the best one in those categories and either you could see some damage over time by on the motherboard at least by running level four or five okay um but typically level four is the highest i will go and that's never you know uh hurt me in any way but like i said with my motherboard i don't even need to set this so i don't worry about it but for you that's what i would do and then there's also one for where is it yeah uh soc um load line calibration you can also adjust that here too um setting those to three or four and seeing if you still are getting instability can help you out a lot all right now after you go and adjust all those settings all you need to do is go over here to exit save changes and reset hit that it'll apply those changes and then the system will restart all right so i'm restarting my system just to show you that this does work um and We'll see. Give it a, give it a second for that. So this would be the splash screen where you'd hit delete to get into the BIOS.
All right, so let's go ahead and log in. All right. And then if I load up our hardware monitor, we should be able to see. Yeah, our CPU is running at just about 3.9 gigahertz. And we should be able to see the voltage. So we can see the voltage here. We're at 1.08 volts, which is, you know, you can round that up to 1.1 volts. All right, so you can see how we are actually doing exactly what we said. You can see that here as well. Temperatures are looking great. Now, again, if you do this, you are going to lose performance, especially at 3.9 gigahertz. So this is something that you want to really do only if you have to. And I know that my chip can run 4.3 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. But, again... It's almost unnecessary. It's better to get better cooling, better fans, better airflow, adjust the fan curves, and let the CPU do its own thing than to really get in here and mess with this, unless you really have to. If you have like a small form factor case or you really just can't get a better cooler or something, all right, maybe this is better. But in my testing over the past, you know, like 10 months or whatever, I've noticed that I'm getting just about the same performance on auto. I don't have to worry about any degradation on my CPU. Um, because I have good cooling and good airflow. All right, so something you might want to consider. I also adjust my fan speed so that it's not always ramping up and, and annoying me for no reason. Okay, I'll do a video on that and adjusting fan speeds in the BIOS as well coming up in the future. But this one I wanted to get out of the way because I did promise this for a couple weeks now and finally I'm able to do it. This is how you do it in the BIOS. This is how you uh, can double check it in Windows. And if you don't know what settings you want to set. I done a video on how to test it. Basically what I showed in that other video with um, Ryzen Master, we're testing with Prime 95 and Cinebench and stuff like that. You can apply that here as well, except instead of going into um, what's it called Ryzen Master, you would just reboot into the BIOS, change the settings, and then come back into Windows and test it. Okay, so those are things that you want to double check and try out for yourself. Um, this is going to be the video for me, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.